let's review what we he had uh, previously in our uh, campaign so uh, you guys spent your first evening in Baldur's Gate as guests in uh, Nathak Hornswallow's small residence now uh, Roscoe and Devlin stayed and enjoyed the hospitality of the of the merchant and his Kalishite housekeeper uh, Zara Thok um, decided to go out and explore the city um, so Thok he went uh, to basically investigate the leads that he found regarding Talis painting and he ended up in the Low Lantern Tavern uh, where he met the lady captain and she took him to a, a dragon cultist hideout in the under cellar which is like a sprawling dungeon out uh, beneath Baldur's Gate. Parts of it are like uh, officially explored and are used as cellars, taverns uh, warehouses etc but part of it uh, are still unexplored um, those um, cultists told him especially uh, their leader a dragonborn named Nedam he told Thok that Talis was sent um, to stand for her crimes against the cult she was basically caught spying on the cult activities and um, relaying information to a man named Kiraj uh, he's a well-known spy um, residing in the Elf Song Inn, and they offered him a deal. If Tok would be able to learn who Kiraj works for, Talis can be saved a lot of trouble. Uh, then, uh, with armed with that knowledge, Tok rejoined the group. And just before breakfast, uh, Devlin returned to the baker. Uh, you guys encountered just on the on your first visit, on your first day uh, at Baldur's Gate. And uh, Devlin learned that the Harpers have lost an agent to the cult, to the, to the dragon cultists. Uh, he was spying on a half dragon traveling through the city using a heavy curtained carriage. And the description of this half dragon is um, um, it, it's really similar to Resmir, uh, which Tal should be familiar with. Uh, the baker believes that the cult is holding uh, the agent prisoner somewhere in the undercellar and. Uh, believes that rescuing this agent will probably reveal a lot of information with regards to recent cult activities. Uh, now we all joined back at the Horn Swallow residence and after a, a short breakfast uh, Flaming Fist mercenaries broke in uh, to uh, the small apartment uh, with Grimalk leading them pointing at you and shouting Dragon Cultists! This is where we stopped last time. So I need you all to make um, initiative rolls, and I need someone to roll for uh, Thok. I can actually do it myself, so probably can do it using his character sheet. So um, yeah, initiative rolls. Okay, so we have Roscoe with 8, we have Tal with 19, which is ph phenomenal, Thok with 23, probably a natural 20 there, and Damien with 12. Uh, so, sorry, Devlin. Okay. <laughs> Before combat starts, I would like to ask uh, Roscoe. Uh, well, I, I, I would I would ask everyone like, are we planning on an escape, or should I should we should we take out these people? How many are there? You count uh, something like uh, four or five inside the apartment, but you hear more outside. My initial reaction is to take them out because um, that first I'd like to know their evidence for this dragon thing. So uh, just to um, remind you something from last uh, session, 
they burst in right after Thok took the crystal the dragon Lenithan brought you and start and activated it. Um, just to just to remind you. Ah, okay. Um, then maybe it is best to leave quickly because I I don't know what that crystal does. But I'm just as happy to stay here and take him out. Okay, so Thok uh, or or um, Will. Well, what will happen to Nathak and Zara and, and the boy if we if we abandon them? Good question. Probably get taken by the by the guys, you know, by the fist. So. So yeah, I. So that's not an option, actually. Okay, so Thok, I just will uh, do what he told me he will do uh, last session. He cast Invisibility, um, and he, tr he tries to escape through the window. Um, so all you hear is uh, him muttering some words, and then you can hear a, a, a ruckus when two Flaming Fist uh, soldiers burst into his room. Um, so this is Thok. Tal, what are you doing? Okay, so I'm, I'm, what I'll do is I'll buy time for my group to escape. So I will charge in uh, towards the first uh, first person that I would uh, closest to me, and I would use my battle axe. Okay, so let's assume you were sitting on the table uh, eating breakfast uh, when the door slammed open. You can see two soldiers immediately running to Thok's room and three more uh, simply headed, uh, looking around at at you and Roscoe and at uh, Devlin. So you can basically charge at them. So I'm I'm basically uh, gonna flip the table. Okay. And then uh, charge in uh, towards this uh, person that's supposed to be, as you mentioned. Okay. And so I will. Yeah. Great. So uh, uh, plates shatter and uh, glasses are are everywhere. Zara is screaming. Um, and her child also. So uh, go for it. Make your attacks. Okay, this is the first one. Um, because I don't want to. Uh, I wouldn't want to do. I don't want any event that happened in Elturel to happen here again. So I'm gonna use the blunt end of my weapon. Okay. Uh, Got it. Sixteen. Yeah, a sixteen exactly hits. The uh, chain shirt of the god kind of splits uh, and he takes the damage. How much is it? Ten? Ten. Okay. So, um, you kind of sm yeah, you can kind of smack him dead on on the chest. So the, the chain kind of um, rattles and he gasps for air. And then he falls on one knee. I knock him out with a second blow. Okay. This is the offhand. Great. So he's down. Okay. And then I will taunt every guard towards me if I can. Okay. Yes, you can. So two more um, are kind of uh, pointing at you. Um, and Grimalk, after seeing your first mighty attacks, uh, shouts, We need backup! Um, at this point, it's the, the Flaming Fist uh, turn, so uh, two of them will charge at you, Tal. Um, but, uh, okay, so the first one attack is a 13 to hit. Misses. Misses, and the second one is 14 to hit. No. Okay, so you managed to parry and dodge both of uh, those uh, guards attack. Uh, two more are rushing from uh, the outside um, and seeing you occupied with uh, two of their comrades, they simply ignore you and look for um, Devlin and Roscoe. Um, How big is this like door that they are charging in? Is it like they're coming in in one spot? Yes, or? yes one after one. One of the, after the, the other, sorry. So can I use my reaction if they went past me? Yeah. As an sure. attack of opportunity? Yeah, sure. If, if possible, I mean. Yeah, 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 that's uh, reasonable. 
so, okay. uh, 16 to hit. Yeah, so you hit another god for um, again with a mighty blow. You simply bring him down. So Roscoe, the the god that was headed your way, as he runs towards you, kind of gets smacked uh, uh, behind his head by Tal, and he drops. Um, so uh, Devlin, uh, only one guard approaching you, uh, swinging hard uh, and hits armor class or uh, uh, 17. So I'm guessing it's a hit. That's a hit, yeah. Okay. So he is holding a spear um, and he hits you for five points of damage. Five points of uh, piercing damage. Okay. Um, so that's uh, Deathlin. You also hear uh, again a ruckus and shouts. Uh, you can hear a broken window. So you believe uh, Thok managed to um, exit the room, but then you hear uh, whistles outside. Um, someone is uh, playing through the, the window quickly over there, etc. Uh, etc. Et um, at this point, you all hear um, from behind the door someone uh, muttering a word of a spell. Um, and I need to know your um, hit points. Probably on full. Lyra. So, Devlin, you are on 27, Roscoe 27, Thok 28, and Tal, you're 36. Am I right? I'm on 22, because I've just taken 5 damage, haven't I? Okay, 22. Uh, but all the rest are... Um, I got it right? Yes. Okay, so let's see if he... If you are put to sleep, uh, he, someone from uh, aiding the guards uh, is casting a sleep spell. Um, let me just double check something. So, ta -da 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 -da. creatures within effect are affected in ascending order. Rolling unconscious. The lowest burn hit points. Okay. Okay, great. So, 1, 6, 10, 13. Okay, so um, no one falls asleep. Actually, um, Tal, one of your opponents uh, goes down uh, asleep, uh, but uh, you guys are not affected, and you can hear someone is cursing uh, just outside the door. Uh, Devlin, it's your turn. Okay. How many people are in the room? So With right now, uh, right now there's one in front of you, Devlin, one in front of Tal, and probably two in the room next to you. Okay, I will cast Crown of Madness on... Which ones are in the room with us again, sorry? So you have one uh, in front of Tal, one in front of you, and two in Thok's room. Probably some more outside the door. Okay, I'll cast Crown of Madness on the one in front of me. Okay, uh, what do I need to do? I'll just spring it up. Okay. Uh, Roscoe, get ready. To your turn. So in the meantime, while uh, Devlin is resolving his spell, uh, Roscoe, what do you what do you want to do? Yeah, Roscoe, all of this is very disorienting for him. Because first of all, it's like, why does Thok need to talk to Lenneth 
Lenathon in a room when I'm not there? I mean, Lenathon is my friend. Like, why? Like, what kind of private conversation is he having with my... Are they talking about me? Like, what's going on? So he's, like, sort of even confused about that. And then this happens. And then he's like, well, his first instinct is to just kind of try to escape. But then he remembers, like, how Tal kind of jumped into that sand pit or something after him when he and he could have died there and he's like oh i can't leave tell behind and i i can sneak away but he can't so yeah i don't i don't want to do that is roscoe aware of uh that there's a spellcaster in the hallway yes you've all heard the the spell and you've all heard uh one soldier goes down after it okay so i mean i think that's kind of weird but i'm gonna run out um because i have 35 feet of movement so i could probably get there mm -hmm. to the spellcaster yeah, and I'm going to attack that schmuck. Um, what does what does the spellcaster look like? Okay, so when you run past uh, the soldiers who are fighting, uh, basically one soldier who is fighting Tal, uh, you can see just outside the corridor a flaming fist, um, uh, probably um, a member of the flaming fists wearing uh, the red capes of a like a, a duty wizard. Um, and he's he has just a curled hair and wide eyes. Obviously, he's very young. He hasn't seen a lot of combat, um, but he's there to help uh, them. So he is uh, like with his hands ready to cast another spell as you come uh, toward him. Um, okay. I'm ready when you are. Okay. So yes, uh, uh, Devlin, let me know what what the spell does. Okay, uh, a humanoid of your choice within range must succeed a wisdom saving throw or become charmed for the duration. Okay, so uh, what is the DC? 16. 16, so he uh, failed his uh, save. Right. So he's charmed. But, okay, so for dramatic effect, a, a crown of blazing red sort of fire mixed with yellow and black appears on his head um, and he turns to look at we'll have him going after Uh, sorry, you cut out. Towels. Okay. So he'll turn right. He basically gains this bloodlust eyes. His eyes go red. And I mean, it's not sort of bloodshot, as in red. And he starts to stalk towards the one that is on towel. Okay. Okay, so that this happens on his turn, so great. Uh, so yeah, yes. you can all see that uh, Devlin kind of uh, placed a charm on one of the soldiers uh, and he indeed turns to his friend, uh, the one attacking Tal. But in the meantime, Roscoe ran past him, so he kind of tries to smack you as you go past him, um, Roscoe. Okay. And he hit armor class 15. Uh, he misses me. Okay, so you find yourself in front of the uh, Flaming Fist Wizard. Great, and I, I guess I'll take a cue from Tal. Um, I run past Tal and I see the guys on the ground, and I probably notice that they're not dead, so I'm going to try to do not lethal to the wizard. So first with my spear. Okay. Uh, 16 to hit the wizard. Uh, 16 definitely hits him. Um, damage? Uh, eight. Eight for um, the wizard, right? Eight? Yes. Wizard. Eight. Okay. So he shrieks, uh, but he's still, he's still there. He's not... Um... Okay. I'm going to spend a key point to do Flurry of Blows. So I do two uh, unarmed strikes. Trying to just crush his solar plexus or something like that. Okay. So the first one, uh, 18 to hit. An 18 definitely hits him. Uh, 
four, five. Okay. Uh, he is still on his uh, feet. Um, are we at the top of a flight of stairs? Yes. Okay, so I I have this open hand technique thing, which I'll put in the chat. Um, so I would like him to make a strength saving throw. It's a DC of 12, and if he fails, he is knocked down the stairs. Oh, awesome. So, uh, is it the Yay. dexterity saving throw? So he it is a strength saving throw. He failed it critically. <laughs> he rolled a one. I rolled a one. So, Yay. yeah, like um, Matrix like, you kind of smack him and he slow motion flies uh, down the stairs. Uh, please roll for me. Um, let's make it a um, 2d6. Um, let's see how much damage he got from. Uh, that's 2d6? Okay. Five. So he crashes um, as, as a heap and uh, falls down and um, his eyes kind of roll he's uh, very disoriented but you think he's still alive oh my gosh okay well i'm gonna run down the stairs after him <laughs> <No>! <laughs> yay go get him go get him okay. and i have one more one more punch is he prone at the bottom yes of the yes obviously okay so i will give myself advantage on I, i'm just trying to i guess knock him out I'm, I'll, I'll try and kick him uppercut to the chin with my with the heel of my foot try and knock him out Let's okay see. so how, how many attacks right let, let me just count you hit him once and then you did the flurry of blows uh well flurry of blows gives me two more attacks and i've done one of them okay great. so i have one left oh yeah oh yeah so uh, matrix like you fly you, you jump on on his chest and Oh, 20 a crit. Oh, I cr <laughs> Ooh, maybe I maybe I knock him out a little bit too hard. <laughs> Get him. Uh, Take him out. Uh, 7. Okay. So he's uh, definitely uh knocked out of his senses. Um yeah, uh, with with you on top of it. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. Um so we are back to Thok. Um let me just see what happens downstairs. Um Okay. Um. Okay. So all you can hear is uh, people shouting, and um, you, you think these are more soldiers who have spread out uh, just uh, outside the building. But according to their uh, shouts, you think that Thok have escaped. Tell. What do you do? Uh, there's one more guard near me, right? Right, and another one is charmed by Devlin. Okay, so I'm gonna knock out the non charmed Okay. For 14? Uh, 14 doesn't hit uh, the guard. So your okay, axe yeah. kind of rattles on his chain shirt, but doesn't do any damage. Well, then I'll use my offhand and I go. Before I knock him out, I go, we're not cultists. Oh. Okay, so uh, the, the axe basically, um, he, he managed to dodge the blow and uh, through uh, gritted teeth, he says, I know. And then he um, follows with an attack of his own. Um, and at this point, Grimalk uh, tries to flee through the stairs. Um, so, as good luck with that. Yeah. So he 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 does see you, Roscoe. Um, but let's um, resolve the the guards' attack. Uh, oh, I'm rolling ones today, like 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 shit. Um, so, uh, tell the the guard in front of you kind of uh, greeted uh, greeted his teeth and said, "I know." And then he follows with an attack, slips on one of the spilled, um, you know, I don't know, an omelet on the floor and misses his attack. Um, and then Devlin, I, I'm guessing your guard attacks Tal's guard, right? Yeah, the guard basically looks almost enraged. And he shouts to his own man, I'm going to kill you. Awesome. Go to feed on your flesh. Roll, 
roll basically it. wax him. Yes, roll a uh, roll an attack with a plus three, like a d20 plus three. See if we can hit. Uh, I'd say that's nine and probably not. Yep. Okay. Roll of nine. Yes, so he misses, but the other god seems to be kind of, whoa, 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 what's going on? What are you doing? And then he shouts, Grimalk! Um, at this point, Grimalk is fleeing downstairs, and uh, seeing you, Roscoe, he kind of, uh, uh, you know, lose it for a moment, and then he simply lowers his head. Uh, you can see that he's balding on, on the top of his head, but all the rest is kind of a lot of dwarven hairs, and he simply tries to... Hello? Um, run and uh, you know smack you dead on um, so he runs to you and uh, hits armor class 23 uh, he does hit armor class 23 mm -hmm. okay um, so you take um, six points of damage from this uh, body bash uh, i need you to make a strength saving throw roscoe uh, 11. Uh, with an 11 his force the force of the blow simply kind of uh, knocks all the air out of you so you simply fall prone okay uh, and after that, Grimalk uh, tries to continue and go down the, the stairs, but he doesn't cover a lot of distance. So you still, uh, you still have him uh, in sight. Am I? Um, can I take an attack of an opportunity from prone against him, or am I just so out of breath that I'm unable to? Do uh, I think you can. I think you can. Um, and in addition, I have disadvantage though. Okay. I'm prone. Uh, I, I'll try anyway because that's. Let's go. We do. Hey, try and jab him. Sure. Fourteen uh, to hit. Uh, so fourteen doesn't hit this uh, sturdy dwarf. What it, was it? Is it like a oh with a spear? Okay. Um, so no, uh, the the spear kind of flies toward him and then hits him, uh, and then you can see his clothes kind of shift. You can see that he's wearing a a, a leather armor beneath his uh, clothes. So that that was deflected. Uh, you do hear. Um, more uh, flaming fist mercenaries kind of rush toward the the building's opening. Devlin, what do you do? You need to hold concentration, if I remember correctly, on the spell. Yeah, it's when if I get hit, um, then I need to make a concentration roll. Uh, I don't need to keep concentration roll for using spells as normal, but if I cast a spell which is itself a concentration spell as well, then I it, the spell ends automatically. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to... Who hell, who else is in the room? Um, uh, enemies, I mean, sorry. So obviously... You have one more uh, Flaming Fist attacking Tell. Um... The two that are in uh, Thox, were in Thox room, uh, you think they've fled through the... They didn't flee, but they rushed out through the window to try and catch Thox, so they're outside. Um, okay. And that's it. You did see Grimalk run past uh, everyone uh, through the stairs. Uh, you did hear Roscoe kind of... As Grimalk uh, hit him, and then you can hear more Flaming Fist soldiers outside. If um, I'll I'll go sort of out of the room to where Grimalk and Roscoe are, okay, and then I'll cast vicious mockery on Grimalk. Okay, I'm just reading the spell description. It seems like the soldier is uh, can have a wisdom saving throw at the end of each of his turns to end the spell. So I'm gonna make one right now. Okay. Um, so the DC remind me the DC. Oh, never mind. Six. He failed. Okay, okay. Okay. So Ten. you you want to cash? Yeah. Keep. Uh, you wanted to uh, to uh, cast vicious mockery on. I 
I will step outside because that's where Roscoe went. Yeah. Yeah. And cast vicious mockery on Grimalk. Okay, wait a minute. Um, if he's still out there, obviously. Yeah, no, not that. I'm just reading the the spell description again. It says on your subsequent turns, you must use your action to maintain control over the target or the spell ends so oh okay so yeah okay i'll use my action and so you want to st yeah. keep control but you can still move if you want to um head out or something like that you you can still do that i'll keep the concentration going okay at the moment great roscoe okay grimalk is escaping but there's a ton of more of his guys outside the building so you can hear more people at least two because you've heard um, um, you know that the, the two who were after Thok uh, jumped outside as well but probably more yes huh. okay I'm going to um, run back up in the room uh, I guess two questions um, Na what is Nathak and doing in all of this. So Nathak is basically uh, body shielding Zara and her child. Uh, he looks at you when you uh, rush up and he says, run fools. Um, the door. Yep. How damaged is the door? They burst it open. Uh, so there's no... Mm. Is there anything like a, a, a solid piece of furniture near the front door? Yeah, the, the like table. Okay, so I guess what I want to do is um, close the door and barricade the door with the table. Okay. So, and maybe push also uh, Devlin back in the room. <laughs> not, you know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So yeah, you can easily uh, pull Devlin back into the room and move the table to barricade the door. Okay, and I'll say, okay, so... Let's just mop up the guys in here, and then I I know a way where I know a place we can go. Although I really don't, I'll just say that to, to sound confident. <laughs> okay, sounds good to me. Okay, um, tell your turn. Tell. Oh, I was muted. Sorry. Uh, so there's still one guard left, right? Yes, actually two. Uh, one of them is charmed. Yeah. Uh, since when the guy, oh, the guy, when the guy slipped on the omen, he stood it back up, right? Sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, the guy who uh, crit failed near me, he, you said he slipped on an omen. Is he prone or is he got back up? No, he get, got back up. He's not prone. Okay. So I, I will use that uh, opportunity to attack him again while he was trying to stand up okay 24 yeah 24 definitely hits okay so for 11 11 uh, drops him he is unconscious and I'm the only person inside the room besides that charmed guard right no you have uh, Roscoe and Devlin and both of them barricaded uh, the door so uh, okay Thok is is gone though can I just ask something? Yeah. I'm assuming um, the charmed one is now fighting against the other one. So we've got a good opportunity to run, to get out the window and things like that. Do you think? That's more such to everyone. Nathak, where's the secret passage out of your house? I know you have one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he he uh, looks at you in, in with wide eyes and says, No! This is my house. Why should I have a secret way out? Well, I mean, I just kind of throw my hands up and look around. Be because of this, that's why you should have one. <laughs> I never had trouble with Flaming Fist before. Why is Grimark leading them? He should have been here only uh, three, three more days. That's what I was thinking. Although... I'm trying to do the math on my fingers and it's not working. <laughs> okay. Uh, it starts to, to smell like a setup for me. 
Maybe Is there if... a way to get on the roof? Oh, the roof. Yes, of course. And he he um, goes to the uh, to the corridor, uh, takes like this metal bar from the wall, uh, unhinge something on the f on the um, ceiling, and like a small staircase drops down. And he. I think he... it's time to leave. You leave. I will stay here and uh, tell anyone who approaches that uh, you forced me to give you food and drink. They won't believe you. Uh, you sure you don't want to come? I don't know. If I were you, I would leave. But that's up to you. He says, my entire life is here. I can't simply walk away. Uh, this will give Grirak exactly what he wants. No, I will count on you. You will find evidence that will uh, make me... Uh, Make him look bad in the eyes of the of the ruling council, and and then we'll be fine. Until then, I, I will buy you time. Now go, go. I think we are best to go at the moment. Okay. Let's okay. Go. So you all climb the stairs uh, and head to the roof. Um, when you reach the roof, the the house is not a very big house. It's like two and a half stories high. You can see, um, so kind of the, the, the streets below, uh, they are not as crowded with Flaming Fist soldiers as you thought. Uh, you can definitely see Grimok, who is pointing uh, back at the house and talking to a Flaming Fist officer. Um, and you can see uh, something like, I don't know, three or four more uh, soldiers around him. Um, and then... I needed to make a perception check as you kind of look around. Everyone or? Everyone. 23 for Rusko. Okay. 17. Great. So you all have very sharp eyes. So you all notice how Grimok is uh, sticking like a, a sack full of gold to the, highs, uh, to the hands of the Flaming Fist soldier. And kind of you know poke him with uh, his finger on the the soldier's chest, uh, basically saying you know I'm paying so you better capture them and uh, and uh, probably do something bad. <laughs> so the the you can see the officer kind of pockets the money and then uh, him he and uh, four of his soldiers rush up the stairs. And Grimalk is alone. Um, youth, yes. Uh, guys, do you want to drop down and take his butt out, or do you want to escape? I think it sounds like I want to know why he's attacked us. So yeah, taking him, uh, at least taking him unconscious would be good, and then we can interrogate him. He's like, um, it's two stories below. Yes. I guess where we are. Yes. I mean, I have a way of dealing with that, but I don't know if anybody else does. I have the ability to spy to climb, so... Ah. And Tal? Oh, I, I, uh, I'm invincible. I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm modest about it as well. That's brilliant. Okay, okay. so, uh, yeah. So, you're invisible. I'm looking, I'm looking to see... Um, uh, Okay, I have some rope. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there like maybe a, 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 some kind of a chimney or something yeah. that I can? Um, so I'll just you know uh, tie like maybe not a rope around you know the chimney, um, and I'll just say that's 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 for you, Tal, to help you be invincible, and then um, I will jump off the roof, and I will use slow fall. Okay. To, just kind of fall like a, you know, like a leaf, and then start beating that guy up. Okay. I'll spider climb down and, and start to do the same. Great. Tell? What's between me and Grimok? How far am I? So, uh, every story is like three meters, which. Uh, times three like it's 10 feet so 20 feet below 
If I ever perform a jumping attack, will I reach the monk? Uh, yeah, but you will probably suffer some, uh, you know, falling damage. Unless you have a way to... Can I use Grimok as my landing pad? Uh, yes, but he's uh, a short, stocky, and armored dwarf, so it's like hitting the floor. He and will then take. I go the... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I'll say he will probably take uh, damage too if you manage to land, like, like crash on top of him. Um, but you, you'll need to roll high on your jump uh, check, and I'll have you make an attack roll just to make sure you manage to land on him. Because I respect Rospo, I untie the rope and put it back in my backpack, and I jump ahead of them. Okay, awesome. So uh, roll your uh, athletics check. Uh, please roll high. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's not uh, very high. Um, so you jump and crash land uh, something like 10 feet um, uh, before Grimalk and taking, oh my, um, uh, that's 10, 15 points of damage uh, from, uh, from the crash itself, from hitting the floor so bad. Um, Grimalk is kind of, he, he jumps back surprised and as he raises his glance he can also watch um, Roscoe floating toward him and Dev uh, Devlin spider climbing the wall which is kind of uh, unsettling um, is this my action? Um, no let's um, no let's let's start restart the the initiative or you know what let's roll initiative of, again I think it will be uh, better. I think I hurt my back. It went fine. <laughs> okay, so the flaming fists are gone. Um, Thok is gone. It's you guys and Grimok. So Roscoe is with 14. Roscoe. I can't get a really good initiative roll. Devlin yeah. is with 10. Tal, how are you doing? 9. I had a bad fall. Okay. Let's see Grimalk. I guess ah. slow fall is pretty slow. <laughs> yeah. So Grimalk isn't uh, didn't roll very well. Uh, I don't know what happened. My my dice are broken or something like that. So Roscoe, you go first. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yes, I do. <laughs> All right. Um. I don't know if we're trying to keep this guy alive or not. I guess. I guess we are. I think it would be a good idea to try and keep him alive, because then we can at least talk to him and see what's going on. But if, if everyone wants to take him out, I don't mind that either. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm okay with doing non-lethal. I'm not, like, a bloodthirsty murderer on, on I mean, at least not, not on a Tuesday. So, <laughs> um, ooh, well, maybe I am. I crit with my first attack. Okay. <laughs> so you float down... Uh, uh, crunching tiger like uh, <laughs> you know the movie uh, so oh yeah. oh yeah so definitely like that uh, and managed to skew him uh, roll for damage uh, 10 damage 10 damage is awesome uh, he look okay and flurry of blows yes. I am just gonna wail on him okay I'm trying to I guess I'm gonna focus on his his kneecaps or his <laughs> you know something something to knock him down okay um First unarmored strike, where is that? Uh, 12 to hit. So, a 12, uh, you notice something strange. He starts to move as if he is well versed in fighting against monks. You can see that he's turning his shoulders and back to suffer the. to take the blows, uh, and you can see a glint in his eyes. So, the first attack definitely didn't hit try to punch the glint out of his eye. I don't like it. Uh, 18 to hit. Yes, and 18 hits him, so he kind of oof! Okay, for 6 damage? Yes. And I need him to... Let's see, what do I want to do to him? Um, I want him to make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. DC 12. 
This is 12. I mean, I don't want him to make it. I want him to fail it. Yeah, so he made it. Uh, ah. Yes, finally I rolled high. <laughs> so I don't knock him down. I guess, well, since I was aiming for the glint in his eye, I just wasn't able to really knock him down with that second attack. Right. So he, he kind of uses his knee to basically lift it, and you kind of punch you, his knee. Um, so uh, you, you two are like uh, fighting with each other. Uh, anything else you want to do? Uh, nope. Uh, do I want to say anything to him? I'm gonna be like, uh, surrender right away. Um, and he looks at you and says, uh, "You need to do much more than this to bring me down." Um. Okay, so uh, Devlin, you're up. Okay. I will say to him, we're going to enjoy wailing on you. You are just so easy to hit. And I'll cast Vicious Mockery on him. Okay. So uh, he needs to make a, a Wisdom Saving Throw. A wisdom Saving Throw coming up. Uh, a seven. No, that's definitely not going to work. So what happens? He takes 1d4 damage and he gains disadvantage on his next attack. Okay. So I'll just roll the damage. Please do, and then it's Tal's uh, turn. I'm quite forgetful. Did I fell onto something, like a wagon or something? Uh, no, you fell on hard floor. Two points hard of floor. damage. He okay, takes okay. two damage, by the way. Yep. So I'm gonna get back on my feet. Um, Emma, can I uh, get near uh, remote? Yes, you can. It's like Devlin and Roscoe around him, but you can definitely do it. Okay, so I'm gonna be that guy who jumps into this brawl and I just tackle and take him down on the floor. Okay, uh, go for it. 14. So a 14, uh, he will try to... So he basically kind of sticks his two... Uh, the soles of his boots into the earth and kind of meets you head on. So that was a 14 for you and 14 for him. Um, so let's roll again. Oh, yeah, I think we should. Uh, I'm rolling or are you... No, let's uh, two of us roll again. So you kind of wrestle with one another. Um, so... You kind of uh, hit him head on. He shifted his weight to counter your attack, but then you shifted back, um, and he kind of whoop, and you managed to uh, sweep him. Um, uh, what do you want to do? You want to grapple him or push him or? I take him. Uh, I, I tackle him to the floor, and then I use Roscoe's rope, and I go, "Yeah, you, you're right, my friend. Your rope is useful." Okay, so you managed to bring him to the floor and you're still on, on top of him. Um, your rope is ready, um, but you will have to try and uh, tie him using your action on the next round. Oh, okay, so I'll basically just take him down then. Okay, so after you have uh, taken him, him down, uh, he kind of uh, takes a... a, a, a you know a big breath of air and tries to simply heave you up I needed to make a dexterity or strength check um, 24 okay so you manage to keep him down uh, in which case he simply draws a small blade and uh, tries to uh, stab you with it uh, now yes but uh, this is something interesting. What happens with uh, disadvantage when someone has a multi-attack? Is it only on his first attack? First roll. Okay. So, uh, Tal, you are being stabbed three times. <laughs> I'm getting shanked. Yeah, like <laughs> chick, 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 chick. Um, So disadvantage on the first means he uh, doesn't actually penetrate your armor. And then... Yeah. Point, I, I don't know if it works this way in your game, but like, if he's prone, mm -hmm. does that not give him disadvantage on attacks generally? 
Yeah, but I think uh, because uh, Tal is on top of him. Ah, so. uh, okay. Uh, okay, so his next two attacks uh, hits AC 15 and 12. Uh, eight, 17. Okay, 17. so clunk, 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 his dagger kind of hits uh, only metal uh, and not you. So you're good. Uh, that was Grimald. Roscoe, you're up. Okay, I guess we're going to have to knock this guy out. Um, so, since he's prone and under Tal, I'm going... I, hopefully I have advantage to hit with my spear? Yep. Okay, so uh, I guess I'll jam the butt end into his face. <laughs> yes, uh, brute force. <laughs> uh, 19 to Yes, hit. definitely hits. Or 7? Seven. 7. Uh, he is smacked. Uh, there's a, a nice bruise on his forehead, uh, but he's still gritting his teeth and gathering strength to throw Tal uh, from his uh, back. Okay, uh, another flurry of blows. Yes. Uh, Twelve to hit. That does not hit. That, I believe. So that not he kind of sends his uh, one free leg to uh, disturb your first attack. And the second, misses. yeah, oh. still misses. Okay. Um, I'll move back a little bit, though. Okay. Because, uh, because, because through open hand technique, it... Oh, no, but that, that's actually my hit, so never mind. So, yeah, I'll just kind of stay there. Okay. Uh, Devlin. Are you able to do um, subduing damage with such things as Eldritch Blast and things like that? Uh, I'm not sure. I think that only using uh, melee weapons, but could be mistaken. Okay. I will cast... Um... Non lethal damage, damage. I think you're right, uh, uh, Ido, that it has to be a melee attack. Yeah, I believe so. I think melee spell attacks might work, but not, um, not Eldritch Blast. Okay. Okay. Um, I will basically. Uh, I'll just to try and slow him down. Okay. Can I place a sleep spell centered on him first? No, sleep spell works uh, like uh, from the creature with the lowest hit points count to the highest. So you don't know how many hit points he has, so... Right. Um, is he wearing metal armor? It's leather armor. Right. I'll keep using Vicious Mockery on him then, so okay. he needs to make another Wisdom check. Okay, coming up, this time a 2. Amazing. So again he has disadvantage on his first attack, which is cool. Tal, uh, you're up. And uh, definitely um, roll for damage. Oh, 1. He also takes 1. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm not sure how the rules work during grab grapples, but can I still make an attack yes. during a grapple? Yes. Okay. He's gonna be facing my blunt edge of my battle axe. For um, 14 or 21, I'm not quite sure. Do I have an advantage? Um, if you attack... Uh, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, let me see... The target, the show them picture. Uh, I don't think you have advantage. Let me just uh, double check. Maybe from prone. Let me check it quickly. This is why I hate grappling. Um, Grapple, grapple, grapple. So, if you're grappled, the, the, his speed becomes zero. Um, 
nothing mentions disadvantages or um, yeah so he's prone I think that if you're trying to attack him no I don't see anything you're, if you're grappling him you can simply attack him that's not the problem and he can attack as well mm -hmm. yeah and basically a grappled creature basically is, is speed is zero so he can basically stand up if he if you want to. Okay, so you attacked for 14? Yes. Okay, so 14 doesn't hit. Uh, he, okay. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing I can't use my bonus action because I'm grappling him, so I'm, I'm seeing this as I'm holding him down with one hand and attacking him with one hand, right? Yeah. So I'll just use uh, my bonus action to say it's three against one. Might as well give up. Okay, I don't think you have uh, any issue with bonus actions. I think you can simply attack normally, as long as you don't. Off. Yeah, as long as you don't uh, use two two hands, that's fine. I think. Yeah, you need at least one free hand, um, and then ta -da -ta -da -ta -da -ta -da, that's it. So y we can assume that you are both standing up. And using one hand instead of two, if if anyone can, you know, use two hands, then that's not. Okay. Twenty-seven. Okay, so a twenty-seven definitely hits. Thirteen. Thirteen points of damage. Okay, so he um, kind of roars. Enough of this. Um, as he tries to um, again stab you three times um, this time the first attack still has disadvantage because of Devlin's spells which is awesome uh, he rolled a 19 on the other dice the, this one was 7 so he misses you with the first attack uh, but then he follows uh, again with two uh, dagger attacks this time scoring an 18 and a 17. Both hits. Both hits. Okay. Um, so, let me just... Ta -da -ta -da -ta -da. But he's using one hand. You are very, very lucky, my friend. Uh, this guy is doing a lot of damage with two hands free. Um, but just because... Ta -da -ta -da. Okay. So you take, uh, that's 14 points of damage from two dagger attacks. Um, let me just make sure I'm not missing anything. No, okay, I'm not missing anything. Um, so he kind of you can see the veins on his neck kind of bulge and his muscle kind of twist and you sense that uh you know according to the way he moves and shuffles and attacks you this isn't some you know regular fighting technique he's not a fighter or something like that you believe he's been um um participating in a lot of combat probably gladiator combats um, because you can see he's a really tough guy and he can get out of almost any uh, situation what would you know still be able to attack and, and cause a lot of damage um, I look at before I end my turn, I look at Roscoe and I tell him to end this before it goes bad because I'm bleeding badly and I will I will give you this you do notice that um you believe that if he will be able to use his two hands and attack you he will be uh, devastatingly difficult to uh you know he will right. deal a lot of damage yeah so and then i also add an additional note just to make things faster i just yell out this guy's trouble let's make this quick and oh. then Roscoe, okay. we get back to you. And at this point, a lot of people uh, on the street are, are kind of kind of watching you fight. Um, <coughs> and they did see Flaming Fists uh, soldiers around. So some of them uh, sh are saying, like, maybe you should call the guards. And, and others are saying, 
uh, we're not sure we should get, uh, you know, don't interfere or we will get hit as well. Because people are aware of the Flaming Fist reputation around here. So, um, Roscoe, what do you do? Um, he's standing up now, the guy. Yes, both of uh, both of them, Tal and... Uh, right, okay. I'll just do my best um, to try and... Yeah, I mean, I don't... Uh, if Tal needs to retreat, that's fine. I'm, I'm going to try and attack the guy. Uh, okay. 16 to hit. So a 16 hits him. Or six damage. Yes. And I will. Huh. Do I want to spend my last key on flurry of blows? I think so. Yeah. I mean, we're trying to take this guy down. Does he look like he's like sort of close to going down? Or um. Does he no. Like he's got. He's got HP out the wazoo. Yeah. No. He's he he looks like um. <coughs> you, you did hit him and bruised him, but he seems like um a very tough guy. So. And Tal, you're about to go down. Okay. Um, I'll, I guess I'll. Can I um, s silence speak to Devlin? Devlin, can you do anything? Or, like. Uh... I can Eldritch Blast him. I've used both of my spells, mm. so, so I can just keep hitting him with Eldritch Blast. Okay. Um. Yeah, maybe we should. You know, I, I guess through city secrets or something. Would I, would I know like kind of a good way for us to sort of make and make a, a retreat? Yes. Okay. Uh, that that seems a good idea if we can. Yeah. Okay, so I will um, sort of um, <clears throat> mentally communicate to Tal and uh, to Devlin to to follow me and. Um, yeah, I'll sort of go in the direction of where I think would be optimal for us to retreat. Okay, so I need I'll follow. Great. So, um, Roscoe, you simply uh, communicate it and dash uh, toward the far end of the street, kind of uh, shoving people around. Um, Devlin immediately follows, which leaves Tal. You're still kind of grappling him. What do you want to do? So, bonus action, uh, second win. Yep. 14. Awesome. That saved me quite a lot. And then I will use my action to cover our tracks. Okay, so you basically kind of uh, shove him and run after uh, Roscoe trying to cover your tracks as much as possible. Uh, yes. How do you do it? I channel my... my, my uh, myself to cast or not cast to breed this darkness that I'm capable of using now oh cool and I spray it in front of me so basically uh, I'm just hindering him from uh, finding out where we are running away from or where we are heading on to okay um, so you exhale that uh, dark mist, which is a fog cloud, and, and a step away from Grimok, who, uh, you know, shouts in rage and anger, um, and uh, you manage to simply disappear. Um, all you can hear is his uh, raging shrieks, and he yells, I paid for them to be captured! Must I do everything myself? Um, and you manage to uh, follow Roscoe, who is leading uh, away through the uh, through the lower city streets. Um, Roscoe, where do you want to take your friends? I just say I love Grimalk's like petite bourgeois entitlement. Like <laughs> I paid good money for this. I want to talk to the manager. Uh, yeah, I um, okay. So I'm not sure uh, where I guess. So Leosin, back yep. in the day, yep. you know, when he kind of found me, um, does he have any connections or contacts in the city? Is there a temple that he maybe 
stayed in or anybody that he introduced me to while mm -hmm. while he was uh, my, when he kind of rescued my sister and I. So yes, um, let me just. So uh, there was a small shrine uh, that is called the Rose Portal. Um, in the uh, southern parts of the lower city, next to the harbor. Uh, it's right, um, you need to uh, go down south and then head outside the city toward uh, the bluffs. Um, and right there, there is an abandoned temple or shrine that is being kept by some uh, monks. Uh, they live... They don't live in the temple, they live, you know, in Baldur's Gate or where not, but uh, they do visit it sometimes and uh, take care of the garden, etc. So is it like here on the map? Yes, exactly. Okay, great. Yeah, and the Rose Portal is the name of it? Yes. Okay, so yeah, that's where I will try and lead my, uh, my friends. Okay. Um, okay, so you run... Uh, and lead your friends through uh, ways, roads, streets that uh, most of people are not familiar with and uh, definitely until you quickly become kind of disoriented because Roscoe is diving down alleys and uh, reaching to places, you know, quickly turning uh, which makes it very hard for you to recall the path. Uh, I need you all to make, or be better yet, Roscoe, make a perception check. I guess I'm a little worried about how we will uh, meet with Tal again, but it seems like at the moment, I mean, Thok again, but yep. um, this, at the moment we need to survive him, so and it's, it's, it's be fine. Okay, so um, as you are running with your friends, you suddenly see two uh, Flaming Fist officers um, kind of patrolling the streets. Uh, you motion to your friends and stop, and then you can hear the two uh, talk. Um, one of them tells the other um, something like, uh, man, we are in deep shit. Uh, and the other looks at him and then he says, this dwarf paid us a lot of money to find those criminals, but we've lost them. And if, he, if people will know that our officers uh, was paid to do that, we're, we're in deep shit. We need to find them quickly. Um, and then the other says, uh, who is this dwarf anyway? Why, why do we even listen to him? And uh, then the first guard says, I don't know. Simply have a lot of gold to hand out. So, you know. And then they, the, the two wander away, um, allowing you to continue your trek through the city. Anything you want to do? make sure they don't see us okay um, they don't seem like the most ethical people on earth so i don't know that engaging them would produce anything constructive okay no i agree it sounds as though this guy is it sounds as though the fists are doing something that Baldur's gate pe uh, guards may be really annoyed about if they found out so that may be useful for later okay um, so you run out and eventually get out of town. Um, Roscoe, I need you to make... Uh, well, not, not you, actually everyone. As you pass through the, the um, um, eastern gate, like here, um, you notice something very unsettling. You notice a poster with your faces on it. Uh, wanted by the uh, uh, priesthood of Elturel, dragon cultist, accused of uh, stealing artifacts belonging to the um, to the priesthood. Anyone who finds them uh, will be well paid, etc., etc. Um, so your your face is on the wall there, um, but you but you manage um, you manage. Um, yeah, I'm li I'm listening. So, Damien's not in the poster, right? Because we've just met Damien. No, not Damien. Uh, not Devlin, you mean. But uh, you, oh, Tal, Devlin. Roscoe, and uh, Zeal. Okay. 
and Thok, obviously. Um, you manage to get out and run past uh, the guards there who seem uh, basically busy um, making sure no crates and no uh, um, uh, caravans enter the city. There's uh, um, strict laws against that. They don't mind anyone exiting the city right now. Um, and indeed, Roscoe, you manage to take your friends, you go up the cliffs uh, to the a small shrine that is called the Rose Portal and the reason it's called like that is because most of the of the shrine has crumbled but there is one big staircase with an archway on top of it um, that is simply covered with roses they kind of grow out from the cracks beneath the the, the cracks through the, the rocks and stones which makes it like um uh, a very interesting sight. It's not uh, very common. Uh, and as you go there, you can see uh, an old man, um, simple robes and um, a, a um, uh, like a bottle of water next to his uh, feet, uh, bare feet. Uh, that he simply uh, stands there and he cuts the roses uh, in a way that should help them grow, uh, removes dead leaves, etc. His Kind of occupying himself with that um, humming to himself. Do I recognize him? Yes. Uh, he's a very uh, gentle man called Orplar. Uh, he is a half elf, um, an, an elderly that, and he is like the garden caretaker, uh, and he lives in Baldur's Gate. Okay, I will just. Um... I think maybe with like a tear or two in his eyes, Roscoe will just kind of go up to him and say like Orplar and I'll just kind of like take his hand, two of my hands and just like kiss his hand and say it's it's me, it's Roscoe, uh, that Leosin is my master, do you remember me? Ooh. It's been a while. Roscoe, it's been a long time. A very long time. How are you doing? And he kind of rubs his hands on your curls. Oh, Orplar, I am. I'm in big trouble. And and my friends here. We we need help. We need a, a safe place to stay. And and the flaming fists in Baldur's Gate. They um, they have been bribed by an evil man to try and apprehend us. He is, I think. He is a dragon cultist, or he is working with them or for them, and um, and we're onto his, we're we're onto him, and we're trying to do the right thing. But he doesn't want us to do the right thing. He wants us to do the wrong thing or just die. Uh, so yeah, so now the the flaming fists are after us, and the city guards are after us, and and d have you heard from Leosin? Do you know where he is? I did. I did see him. It's very unsettling that you are in trouble come come i will hide you and then we can talk luckily oh, the shrine have secrets not all are familiar with come come your friends can come too can i make an inside check yes i, I don't really guy but no um you think he is um well, all you can gouge, this is a, uh, an old half-elf. Um, you can see that he's dressed very plainly. His body language is that of, like, um, um, he seems trustworthy and, and really interested in what ha what's happening to Roscoe, even though you feel that he hasn't listened all the way through. He probably lost Roscoe after the first two sentences. Uh, this is probably a very... He's like um I, I don't want to say dim witted, but he is you know, he's old. Um so he tries to be kind but he probably doesn't follow what uh what Roscoe was saying. Oh, cool. oh I also and I introduced my... my friends like this is Tal, he's a brave fighter, and this is Devlin and he does uh he does some, some crazy magic stuff. Well, my name is Orplar, and I'm the gardener here, and uh, this is the Rose Portal. It is a place of great beauty and resolve. 
Come, I will take you to the under garden. Ooh, you guys are gonna like the under garden. It's awesome. So he simply takes you uh, up the the um, the pathway that um, uh, is covered with roses, and then down a staircase through uh, three ruined uh, rooms that they are simply. You know, no walls, uh, only, o the only thing you can see is the mosaic on the floor. And then he takes you to something that was probably, uh, was like an altar room or something like that. Um, probably made by elves. Uh, he uh, kind of waves his hand above the altar stone, which kind of, kind of uh, rattles and shifts and moves to reveal an opening. Uh, that leads underground. Uh, he takes uh, a torch uh, from uh, the wall, blows on it, and it ignites, and then he motions, uh, come, come. So when when did you see Lyosin or Plar? When's the last time he was here? Did he talk about what he was doing or where he was going? Yes, he... Was as he kind of uh, takes you down and uh, makes sure that the opening closes. Uh, you can see that the walls of these staircase are photofluorescent, so they kind of starts to shine as soon as darkness kind of closes in, and they shine in patterns that resemble leaves and petals and flowers. Um, and as he walks you through this corridor, uh, he says, "Yes, the scene was here. He was resting." after his flight from Greenest, and then he left. He took three books from our small library here and headed to the Mayor of Dead Men. He said there is a ruin he needs to investigate there, said something about an eye in the sky. <gasps> no. By at first I thought you said mayor, but then I was like, me by mere, do you mean like a swamp? Yes, sorry. Like a yeah, by sure, my bad yeah, English. Yeah. No, so um, so he he went to a swamp and he said something about an eye. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! <gasps> that's what the that's what the fortune teller said to me. Yes. What was fortune. your name? Gomori. Gomori. Right. Oh my gosh. He was very very disturbed and was talking about dragons starting to uh, steer in the north in the east even in the south something is definitely going on but you know Leosin he's always worried and always in a great hurry so he just took the books and went away well, whenever he worries, it's for a good reason. Leosin, he's the best. Yes. Uh, he, he worries, I worry. So, um, did he talk about... Because um, we, we were in Green Nest, actually, all of us. We tried... They, they were attacked, you know, by, by uh, this uh, dragon cult. And we tried to help them, uh, kind of, I guess. I think we tried to help. And... Uh, but we had to leave for, for something. And so what happened, actually, in the end to, to Greenest, did he say? All he said is that they suffered a lot of casualties. Many people died. But he was able to flee before the forces took the fort. He doesn't know if this place is... If Greenest is still intact, if the people are safe. But he had to run away. He had to follow a clue, a lead. Something about dragon eggs, I believe. Oh, oh, I, I think we heard something about that too. Well, we went to El Torel to, to tell them about Greenness and to tell them to send soldiers to Greenness. And do you know what they did to us? They arrested us. Why would they do that? Because they're crazy. Because the person in charge of El Torel is a torturer and a, and a maniac. And I'm not kidding. He says... That sounds very bad. I mean, I have visited El Turel and I have visited their temple there. They seemed like good people. But today you don't really know, do you? You know, I, so, so much is not what it seems, I guess. Uh, but we escaped. We escaped from jail. 
and now you know now there's like posters around that you know we're wanted for for it's the whole thing is a misunderstanding and they're unreasonable and crazy everybody's trying to do something bad to us ah look we have arrived he kind of motions with his hand and uh, puts down the torch and then you can see um, think of it as a large garden an underground garden uh, the the earth is like almost black here and there are roses that grow from that black earth and their petals glow in purple and blue uh, and you can actually see all the fine details uh, of how the, the leaves are uh, wrapped around uh, the, the flowers uh, it's like breathtakingly beautiful um, and the the old monk simply watches and breathes and says yes you can you can feel it right the peace tranquility resolve this is this is what i'm working on for so long now they are very beautiful yes may i may i, may I sniff yes of course you will feel powerful you will feel a connection to another time another land it works differently on every on each and one of us but it only works once um, when you do uh, uh, get near to one of those uh, flowers Devlin and as you kind of uh, um, approach it suddenly you all can hear the door up the, the door upstairs kind of uh, the, the uh, the altar stone kind of shifts again uh, and the monk looks at all of you alarmingly saying w you anyone else in your with your people I I'm not expecting anyone and I don't know of anyone who can open those this magical portal and he he looks very worried I, 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 don't, I mean there was we have a, a, a fourth friend, Thok, but I don't know where he went, or it's probably not him. I'm. Sh should we hide? Is there? Is, can we hide in the garden? So, uh, as, as you said, can we hide? You can hear soft footsteps, kind of, kind of uh, descend the staircase, and uh, the monk kind of waves his hand and points at different parts of the garden, uh, basically as far away from. Uh, where you entered it. Uh, just make sure not to step on the flowers. I will go and hide, making sure that I don't step on the flowers. Okay. Um, all of you make your high checks. Twenty-two for Rasko. Are there any mushrooms in the garden, by the way? <laughs> Uh, yes, probably yes. It's underground, you know, good chance. Yeah. Okay, so as you all kind of take uh, spots in the room and uh, make yourself hidden, you suddenly see the form of a young uh, woman, or, or so it seems, um, but on her shoulder uh, she basically supports uh, the larger form of, um, of a man and when the light of the of the garden kind of uh, flickers on her face you can see that this is a draw elf uh, and you actually know her this is Reneal. Um and she says well hello hello don't i have a surprise for you and then she removes uh the the form that was on her back and reveals the face of thok and she she la she lays him on the floor and straighten up and says well where have all where have you all gone to i don't see anyone i'm here <laughs> I have it's okay she's um she's well we know her i was going to say she's like She's our friend. She really isn't. She's a good person. She kind of isn't. I don't know, really. But um. <laughs> um, okie dokie. That sounds all right. Yeah. Okay. I'll step out. And now I, 
I give her a, a, a gesture of, so, did you manage to get some eggs? She says, uh, I definitely managed to get one egg, which I have brought back to my own people. But please tell me, what are you doing hiding in a draw outpost? Um, I, <laughs> um, <laughs> what to say, what to say, um, I, I point my finger towards our friendly neighborhood, Rosbaugh. Uh, I, I, I used to live in Baldur's Gate, I, I came to this place, I didn't know it was a drow outpost, I don't think I ever saw a drow here before, um, but yeah, we're, um, well, a lot of, we're wanted, dead or alive, mostly dead, um, by, uh, the Dragon Cult and the Flaming Fist and the City Guard and, uh, El Terrell and maybe somebody else. Oh yeah, a demon at the gates of hell. So, um, that's why. What so, are you doing here at a drow outpost? So, so she smiles and, f um, removes something from her pocket. Um, and at this point, you can hear more footsteps following her, and you can see three uh, or maybe four more draw elves um, following and descending the, the staircase. And she looks at all of you and says, <coughs> well, we need to talk. And then she removes from her pocket the crystal Thok was using to talk to Lenithan. And she kind of... Um, um, moves the crystal uh, to catch the the colors of the um of the flowers the blue and the purple and the, the crystal is kind of shining uh, in her hand and she says we definitely need to talk and uh, i think it's a good good time to stop here oh yes uh, uh, just just before we stop um uh, when we get a moment or two that I can talk to Roscoe, I'll tell him about the what the what what I was told about the uh, where are we the guy who may know something about who was about the the dragon cult who was part of it that he may be in the undersell and he saw a half dragon okay. woman in a you know what's name because I hadn't had a chance to tell anyone that by the time we got back and had breakfast and then all hell broke loose so okay yeah I will uh, we can we can either do it uh, early on next session or I will simply summarize it up uh, in the in the episode summary so you'll all have access to that information no problem also ex uh, extra note since we're trying to run away from this situation Tal would open up um, about a job offering to us or to anyone who's willing. And I just heard someone is recruiting people to be bodyguards for their caravan. Am I am I correct? Am yes. I... Yes. So if you guys want to get out of here as well as get paid to get out of here, uh, we can take that off. I like the idea. But I am wondering whether we should, if we want to know, I, I mean, Devlin doesn't know what the heck he's got himself in, you know. But <coughs> we've been talking about a half dragon cult. Maybe by grabbing this guy called, if I remember, it was his name was Tamasa. Yep. We'll we'll find out more about a this dragon cult in general, and b he may know some information about this. A guy who's just attempted to get us arrested as well because it sounds very strange that he came after us mm -hmm. no, I'm just gonna uh, I mean as, as tall I'm just gonna add an extra option for us cool yeah that's, that's it is well, it's kind of uh, confusing what to do is so much so much going on <laughs> yeah okay so. the second town 
I like the idea of, of getting out of here a bit later on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It would be really Declan useful. is, um, you're probably regretting, like, taking up with us at this point. I mean, we come with a lot of baggage that, you know, <laughs> we're really, you know, there wasn't a full disclosure at the beginning about the... <laughs> yeah, I don't remember signing up for this. I, I don't remember, you know. Yeah, yeah it, we, we kind of unconsciously agreed that we will be wanted criminals in every town, places that we visit. I mean, I have a lawful good alignment. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, I steal, but that's, you know, only for good reasons, like, because I want something. Well, you know, to quote a, to quote a great man, no reward is worth this, so <laughs> let's, yeah, let's I'm do. thinking of, how the hell do I get out of this outfit? Anyway, you have a lot of uh, a lot to think about and uh, decide, and uh, next session would uh, probably require you to make a lot of decisions. So, uh, but that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, okay. So. Thank you for the session. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thanks, Thank guys. Thank you, and see you next week. See you Alrighty. next week. Bye bye. Have a good night or good morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> good week. Yeah, good, it's a good morning for me. Yeah. Okay. Good morning then. Bye bye, guys. See you next week. Bye. Yeah. See you.